Bonjour, les Packers. My name is Sangram. Um, I'm running for the Board of Governors representative. Why you guys may be interested in the Board of Governors is because... This mic really sucks. So can I just speak out loud? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 So why you guys might be interested in the Board of Governors is because they have the final say on something important to all students, and that is tuition. Now, if, if there's a tuition increase next year, I'm going to be real with you guys. I will fight really hard for it, but I won't be able to stop a tuition increase. What I'm more interested in is talking to you guys about how, with a long-term strategy, we can build, uh, make, make it less likely to have a tuition increase. How I plan to do this is one. The first reason is the reason there's a need for a tuition increase is because of something called non-dedicated funding. That's where every time the provincial government cuts funding, they need to make their revenues keep constant, so they need to increase tuition. What I'm advocating for will take 15, 20 years to create a plan for a long-term plan for the university to become self-sufficient in their non-dedicated funding. That will reduce the need for a tuition increase uh, for, for budget cuts. Second is to make the university more transparent. You know, we are, we are expected to pay more, and we're expected to take a reduction in the number of classes. We ought to know where our money is going. Finally, now for the campus St. John, there's a lot, number of issues. The first is there's been discussions about moving campus St. John to, to, to North Campus. Right? What I will advocate for is to get a legal binding issue, legally binding document that says we're going to stay here. It's, it, it's, it's a recommendation. It's likely not going to happen, but we need a legally binding document to, to make sure that we can stay, that we are staying here. That's the number one issue. And the second number issue is to, uh, is to, uh, sorry, brain freeze. Second issue is the number of classes. Right? There's a number of classes that are being reduced here. But if we solve the non-dedicated funding issue. I believe that every student should be, whether if you're, if you're, if you're learning in French or English, you should be able to do that. And if we solve the non-dedicated funding issue, hopefully in the long-term process over five, ten years, we can get those classes back and hopefully get more classes. But this is not going to be solved in my term, but I really want to get the ball rolling on those stuff. And I'm running, my name is Sagram Hatcher, I'm running for the Board of Governors. Thank you. Merci Sandra. Nous allons maintenant passer au deuxième candidat qui est Umar Farouk. Bonjour, madame et monsieur. And I just need to my French. <laughs> it's been four years, forgive me. Uh, my name is Omar Farouk, and I'm running for the Board of Governors Representative. I don't know if this mic is still working. But I'd like to address uh, some of the issues with tuition costs, etc., that have been already brought up. Um, with tuition, uh, the issue really is uh, I mean, breaking down what tuition you are charged with. Because right now, tuition by law is capped with inflation. So the government will not be able to increase it legally speaking. But what they will do, is increase the uh, number, uh, increase the, the amount of non-structural fees. These are the fees that go towards uh, the students, students union uh, uh, fees towards building and facilities, and these fees are really there just just for the university to get more money out of you. But but the thing with the, this, these fees that we can fix short term, right now, within the next term, is that we can regulate them and know where the money is going, so we can regulate where the money should go instead of this. Because right now there's no plan for where that money is going. Uh, for example, you pay for you pay for your hallway fees, but are they maintained? No, they're not. Especially with Campus Saint Jean. Uh, recently, recent issues have been brought up are uh, the promise to build science labs on Campus Saint Jean, but which were, which never happened. Instead, uh, plans were proposed for a leadership college, uh, which uh, which is extremely exclusive and looks a, a short number of people uh, to be in it. And that doesn't work for everybody. That doesn't work for Cambridge St. John students, for Augustine students, as well as U of A students. And that simply is not fair. When people say that students do not have the power, or uh, same power as board governors university to make a difference, I believe that is wrong. We as students are the center of the University of Alberta. And we can make that change happen now, or we can have it later. What matters is that we take action right now, and we believe that we can do it, and we stand up and say that no, we will not have, we will not stand for this, and we will make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Omar Farouk, and I'm running for the Board of Governors Representative. Thank you. Donc nous avons fini d'entendre les deux candidats qui veulent être représentants des Board of Governors. Nous allons maintenant passer avec les BP Student Life et nous allons commencer avec Patrick Karina. Bonjour mes Packers. Donc j'espère que vous me connaissez déjà. Je, ça fait trois années euh, que je viens au campus. 
Um, je suis très impliqué dans la vie ici. Et on va avoir beaucoup de candidats qui vont dire qu'ils veulent lier le campus Saint-Jean à Main Campus. Ça, c'est quelque chose que j'aimerais faire. Mais la différence entre moi et eux, c'est que je connais ce campus, je connais ce que nous avons besoin, je connais les opportunités que nous avons ici et les opportunités que nous manquons de là-bas. Donc, ma proposition pour lier le campus Saint-Jean à Main Campus, c'est de, de vraiment de, de pousser les exécutifs de venir ici à chaque barbecue que nous avons, pas seulement au commencement de l'année, de pousser que les événements comme Health Waves, qui est un événement à West End, viennent au campus Saint-Jean parce qu'on peut aussi bénéficier de ça. Ainsi que avoir des, des, des facultés de engineering et de business, d'avoir des, des chapitres ici qui peuvent lier les, les, les étudiants du campus Saint-Jean qui sont dans la génie et dans le business pour qu'ils savent où aller quand ils vont à Main Campus, pour qu'ils savent qui parler, avec qui parler et quel service utiliser. Merci, je m'appelle Patrick Kahina et je viens du campus Saint-Jean. Son nom, c'est Parjani Ajashi. Hello, Campus Saint-Jean. Wow, this might... Oh, if you're not kidding, this might be through yourself. Um, so, I am running for Vice President of the University of Alberta Students' Union. Not the Vice President Student Life of uh, North Campus, not Augustana, not Cam Campus Saint-Jean, but one united university of Alberta. And as such, my aims are for all the students across all the campuses. And this includes um, aims like advocacy. Advocacy is a very important thing for me. Um, this includes fees, uh, rent increases in residents. We don't fall under the Resident Tenancies Act. We need to act on that. Um, then, uh, let's see, international students all across the board in different um, campuses. Uh, I also aim on making all our campuses safe spaces, more inclusive spaces, and um, using small initiatives like these with um, music therapy, pet therapy, and um, open my uh, stand-up comedy nights. I want to reduce um, stress and uh, make our campuses a really healthy place when it comes to mental health. Because you're either going to go up on stage and tell a good joke, or sing a good song and make people laugh, or you're gonna make a fool of yourself and make people laugh. In either case, people are gonna laugh, and I feel that's good for the community. So let's let's all, everyone wants a happier community, everyone wants a happier campus, no matter where you're from, where you live, where you study. And that's my spiel to you guys. So yeah, I'm running for the BSL of the University of Alberta Students Union. So, one university, one audience, one student group. Merci, Joshi. Et la seule femme qui a osé se présenter en même titre que ces hommes, elle s'appelle Insert Big. to take 
to improve mental health, physical health, also the food service itself. So if I get elected, I promise you that I will talk to our members on by this one and to, to bring more diverse food that is already, already available in main campus. So you guys can enjoy more food and you guys don't have to run to 7-Eleven and buy food or like start during lecture. lecture. Oh, if you guys, guys want to know about me and my platform, please check foodincompete.com and also you guys can find me on Facebook. Um, Jatem, eh, eh, um, eh, Thank you. It's, uh, it's hard to follow up Patrick. He had a great reception. So, uh, my name's Nicholas. I'm running to be your Vice President of Student Life. And you know, just before I start into things, I want to let you know a little bit more about myself. I came here in 2011 as a transfer student from McEwen. I got involved with student groups and my involvement just took off here. It was actually the outreach student group. Uh, so after a month of that group, I was, became their party planner. But uh, now, three years later, far beyond the party planner, we actually uh, started U of A Pride Week. So it's just so nice for me to see all of these big teachers here doing the, the anti-building stuff. Yes, this couple of them. Yeah, give yourself a round of applause. This is really nice to see. So uh, for my platform, there are three core pillars to the platform. I'd like to diversify the events that the Students' Union is doing. I'd like to uh, strengthen our health services. And I'd like to increase the advocacy portfolio of the VP Student Life. Now for Campus St. John, one of the core things has been diversifying the events, and as the other candidates have mentioned. Uh, one, one idea among many that I wanted to bring is that, uh, so the Augustana Students' Association has the same issue as another satellite campus. They throw amazing foremost. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get out to it, but the, uh, the U of A has, uh, the Students' Union has booked coach buses for the, uh, the Golden Bears and Pandas to get out to Augustana to go to events. And I think it'd be so great if we could have a united three campus formal. That would be so great. So, my name is Nicholas Diaz. I'm running to be your VP Student Life. You can find out more about the platform at votediaz.ca. And uh, yeah, thanks for your time, everybody. Et nous allons maintenant passer au dernier candidat qui va aussi être VP Student Life et son nom est Fabian Gonzalez. Yeah! <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Fabian Gonzalez. I would like to thank you for giving me a couple of minutes of your time. First, I want to say something very clearly. I do not speak French and I am not going to pretend to be someone that I am not. Who I am is who I am. And I don't wear pink shirts sometimes, I have pink hair. I brand myself, I live what I believe in. Now, I know what it's like to speak a language different from what everyone else speaks. To be worried about taking classes that maybe you will not understand. My first language is not English, my first language is Spanish. It's not French, it's similar enough that we can communicate with each other, but if there's something that I've learned in my time here is that the language that we speak the color of our skin, or ethnicity, or gender. All of that is just what's out here. What matters is what's inside. What matters is that we're all students here. It's not that there is one Campus San John, one Augustana Campus, one Main Campus, one South Campus. We're all one university. And whatever happens in the Main University will happen here, and in Augustana, and everywhere, because we are one. And I want to be your vice president of student life, and I want to make a world where there is no longer any distinction between national and international student, between French and non-French student, between any of us, regardless of who we are. Where we want a hand, we can reach and feel safe. Where we want to give a hand, we have the resources to give it. I want to build this world with all of you. I'm an awesome guy, maybe, but all of you are more awesome. Having someone bringing her dog to, to make the world a better place is more awesome. Having someone setting up a dance uh, is more awesome. I want to empower you guys to find your place in life to do what you think is cool, not what I think is cool. My name is Fabian Gonzalez. I would be honored to be your Vice President of Student Life. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Thank you.
place apparemment. On va passer avec l'un des postes aussi les plus importants, le poste de président de la SU, et on va commencer avec Adam Woods. I would speak in French, and I actually, I've taken like four years of French, but my accent is so atrociously Albertan that I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, so I'll get, I'll get right into it here. My name's Adam Woods. I'm running to be the president of the Students' Union, and the reason that I want to be your president is because I love doing this. I love representing students. It's what makes me wake up in the morning. So I'm going to jump into a few of the issues that I want to talk about, uh, and I'm going to focus on one of them a bit more, but some of the things that I'm looking at, and I encourage you all to check out my platform at adamwoods.ca, are improving academic advising options on campus. We should be able to track our degree through bear tracks. We shouldn't have to uh, email a faculty advisor for a program check. We should do a better job of providing peer services to first years on campus. We should do a better job at protecting student group interests. I'm sure many of you are aware of the recent student group changes, and those are things that we need to fight against. We need to take a stand, and if elected come May, I will ensure that this is the first issue I bring up. Now, what I really want to touch on as an issue, and it's huge for me, and it drastically affects this, affects this campus, are the government cuts. This has been something that has affected the entire campus, but especially for smaller areas like Augustana, like the fact that often at times get the short end anyways, it can mean quite drastic things for those campuses. I spent your last year, I spent the last year as your vice president external. It was my job to advocate to the government, and I did my best. I made it clear to them that students were not happy with these cuts. I made it clear that reinvestment in a post-secondary is a must, and that if we are going to improve the standard of education in this province, we need to invest. And that is the message that we want to continue next year and that we need to continue this year. If we want to protect our quality of education and not be paying more for less, we need a president who next year is willing to stand up to the government. We need a president who next year is willing to take a stand when things aren't going the way they should be. And I can't promise that I'll actually make progress, but I do promise that I'll show up every day and I'll try. And I will make it clear to whoever it is that uh, students should come first, especially when we're talking about education in this province. My name is Adam Woods. Thank you for listening. mais je pense qu'il n'est pas là à cause de sa jambe donc euh, nous allons directement passer à Bachir Mohamed um, His father was putting his son to the bed and the son asked him Father, is it true that the lion is the king of the jungle? The father replied, yeah, that's true and then the son asked So how come in all the stories where the man fights the lion the man always wins? The man always wins The father replies it's because the lion can't write its own stories. Together, we have very similar stories, but often we write it like they're two different books. Together, we face many different challenges. Tuition, it's gone up 360% since 1990. International student tuition is unregulated, and childcare takes one and a half to two years to access at the U of A. Now, I'm not gonna stand here today and pander to you guys. I'm not gonna stand here today and say that I, I understand your context. Uh, J, Sweets, Parlay, Terry, France, I don't know how good that was. But, uh, but I'm not going to promise those things to you. What I will promise, like Adam was just promised, is that I'll try and that I'll make sure our stories are written in the same book. And one way I can do this, it's in my platform, it's uh, hosting council at, at, uh, at CSJ. Uh, I've been on council for a year and we stay on main campus. I think we need to host council at least once at CSJ so people can see this campus. So my name is Bashir Mohammed. You can see my platform online on facebook.com slash vote Bashir. And I hope uh, you guys have good questions for us. Thank you. Merci Bashir Mohammed. Les derniers pour le poste de président sont le Dutch team, mais je pense qu'ils ne sont pas là. Donc nous allons passer avec les VP external et la première candidate s'appelle Narvid Hilda. et je vais être votre vice-président externe. Euh, je suis dans la quatrième, quatrième année et j'étudie la science politique et l'économie. Euh, donc, euh, je pense que le post-secondaire, c'est très important pour les étudiants. Je pense qu'il il faut que notre système post-secondaire est accessible à tous les étudiants albertains et que notre qualité d'éducation est et très bon. <rire> Donc, il y a quatre points sur ma plateforme. Euh, premièrement, je pense que notre système d'aide financière est euh, plus, euh, plus accessible pour les étudiants. 
Deuxièmement, je pense qu'il faut qu'il y ait euh, plus d'opportunités pour des emplois d'été. Et troisièmement, je pense qu'il faut, qu euh, faut que les étudiants ont plus des opportunités de s'involver euh, dans la démocratie. Je pense que, <rire> oui, euh, pour moi, c'est très important que les étudiants aient les opportunités de voter sur le campus. Et euh, le dernier point, c'est pour réglementer les, euh, les frais de scolarité et euh, les frais pour les étudiants internationaux, parce qu'il n'y a pas de législation euh, maintenant. Donc, si vous avez plus de questions ou euh, si vous voulez consulter ma plateforme, euh, visitez mon site web à uh, et oui, c'est tout. Merci. Bravo! Nous allons passer aux hommes qui participent aussi à cette même compétition et le prochain est Dylan Hallward. Thank you guys very much. Um, so my name is Dylan Hanwell. I'm running for Vice President External. Unfortunately, I'm kind of in the same boat as a lot of other people in that my high school French classes, they, we just showed movies, um, <laughs> which I didn't mind during the time, but now I'm kind of regretting it. Um, I just wanted to talk because about one of my platform points that I think you guys is really relevant to small campuses. And it's not often that we get to talk to uh, smaller campuses uh, with U of A. And it's talk about talking about communicating budget cuts, in a sense. So, as we all know, budget cuts happened. Um, and the great thing that happened was the government came to us and said, all right, you're not going to pay, oh, it's getting louder, um, you're not going to pay any more money. And we didn't. Our tuition stayed the exact same uh, price. It was frozen. Fantastic. Uh, and I'd say I'm appreciative of the government for that. At the same time, though, I don't think they understand that when budgets are cut, quality is affected. Classes are cut, classes get bigger, professors are lost, uh, non-academic staff are lost, and that's why it's one of my big platform points, is that even though we didn't have to pay anything more, our quality and the quality of our education was drastically reduced. And I think you can see that a lot, especially in Campus St. Jean, where you know a 20-person class may not seem like very much to uh, a main campus administrator, but when you're on campus here, That's an entire class, an entire prerequisite that you might need for business or for nursing or anything like that. So I think that when we go to the government, we have to say, yeah, sure, budget cuts we didn't bear the brunt of, but at the same time, we, it was balanced on our books and it was balanced on the quality of education that we received. And I think it's really, it was felt very hard here at Campus St. Sean. Uh, again, my name is Dylan Hanwell. I'm running for Vice President External. Thank you guys very much for listening. Um, yeah, have a great day. Et maintenant, le dernier candidat s'appelle Thomas Dan. I'm not even going to try to speak any French, because the only thing I remember from my French classes is that Simpsons episode where Bart went to France and learned French in like a day. So that's the only thing I remember from that. But um, anyways, I'm here to talk to you about why you should vote for me, Thomas Dang, for VP external. I'm not going to bore you with the same things everybody else is talking about. They're talking about mandatory non structures They're talking to you about um, tuition and their freezers and whatnot. They're talking about budget cuts federally. Yeah, we all know about that. We all know that it sucks when tuition is cut, but what are we going to do about it? What do I want to do about it specifically? Great, I can lobby, I can write letters, I can sit on boards, I can meet with MLAs. Anybody can do that. We can do that all day long and nothing's going to happen. What I propose is we actually take a stand. We actually, as students, decide to do something about it. So if we have to get a bus of 400 kids to go stand somewhere at, at Minister Hancock's office, if we have to get people out there to actually fight for our rights, if we have to make video after video of students' faces of what's actually being affected so that people are aware of what's going on, if we have to do these things, this is what we have to do to get our school back for us. I'm writing on three ideas, fairness to students, social justice, and making this university ours. I don't think we can do any of that unless this administration, along with the government, recognizes that the university won't be ours unless we actually have a say in where our funds are going and how our funds are being used. And I think that really a lot of the candidates here are going to talk to you about this is my platform, this is my platform, these are things that I want to fight for. And I want to tell you that I'm actually going to fight for them. This is how I'm going to fight for them, and this is why you should vote for me. 
So I'm Thomas Dang. Find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash thomasdangab, or Twitter at thomasdangab. All right, great. Both for me and Thomas Dang. Thanks. Wow. Certains candidats sont vraiment passionnés par leur rôle. Nous allons donc passer avec le seul candidat intéressé à être notre vice-président Operation et son nom est Curry Hudson. Hello, bonjour. Uh, and I cannot speak French. It's the class I almost failed consistently in high school, so I won't uh, ever hear you. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, my name is Corey Hodgson and I'm running for Vice President of Operations and Finance. I'll try to talk about maybe two of the things that are most uh, pertinent to Camp St. Jean. Uh, so one of the first things I want to do is, uh, currently the uh, Students Union requires all faculty associations and campus, campus associations that collect a fee to uh, uh, get a review done. Uh, this process has been really hard for a lot of the faculty associations and uh, campus associations, so I want to internalize this process within the SU. Essentially, when AUFSJ has to have its books audited, the SU would hire the auditor to do it for them. Uh, there would be some difficulties in this, uh, with, the, uh, with the documents being in French, but I'm sure we can overcome this. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, my second point that I would like to touch on for, or I think is pretty, uh, pertinent here, is uh, I'd like to grow our SU businesses. So uh, you don't see any SU businesses at, at, at uh, the VAC, and I think that's something we could strive to improve. Uh, what I'd like to do first is start with uh, conducting a feasibility study of expanding our current business, Little Express, and I kind of want to just uh, achieve a long-term plan for growth in all our businesses. So. There are no uh, uh, food outlets the SU runs at uh, Augustana or Campus St. Sean, so I, I think that's something that when the SU provides food, it's, our interest is, is, is it's affordable, it's healthy, and it's sustainable. So I, I think what we can offer is a bit better, and we should really try to expand our businesses to, to offer them here uh, so that it's not just all on North Campus. Once again, my name's uh, Corey Hodgson. I'm running for Operations and Finance. Uh, I have all the video game themed stuff. Uh, so you can check out my full platform at www.boatcorey.ca. I don't have posters here. I, I apologize. I, I forgot to bring them. But I do have some handbills I'll, I'll, I'll give to you afterwards. Uh, thanks for your time and have a great day. Merci c'est le nombre de personnes qui veulent être notre VP académique cette année. Et on va commencer avec la première. Son nom est Rebecca Platz. Hi everyone, like almost half the candidates here right now, I don't speak any French. So the reason I decided to run for VP academic is because of the budget cuts last year. They're not fair. It's absolutely appalling that this happened in a province that's so oil rich. So my big thing is making sure that no future budget cuts affect any programs. It's really harsh to Campus St. John and Augustana that they're probably going to have to bear the brunt of them if there are more budget cuts announced next year. Growing up in a home with a second language, I know what it's like to have a love of that and want to learn more of it. So that's really important to me. And I also really want to bring up Campus St. John representation on main campus so we can connect more and get more issues out. Thank you very much, and please vote for Dr. Fox for BT Academic. Thank you. Merci, Rebecca. Apparently, they all have neglected French. Avant, but we're going to pass to the next candidate. Her name is Catherine. My name is Catherine Rodzak, I'm running for Vice President Academic of the Students' Union. I want to start by telling you all a little bit about myself. This year I'm the Student Governance Officer for the Students' Union. I work closely with the faculty associations and campus associations. Relevant to you, this is AUFSJ. Uh, yeah, I okay, agree. Um, I, a, a large part of my platform is supporting the, these associations and their advocacy efforts, as well as their operational efforts. Corey kind of stole my thunder. One of my platform points is also to get a universal financial reviewer for the campus associations and fi uh, faculty associations. I would do that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have a, I do have a plan for doing this. It, I'm hoping to contact a number of companies and let them know that 
if they are willing to provide us with a good or provide the faculty and campus associations with a good deal, they will have a, a 14 returning like returning uh, uh, clients. Um, yes. So uh, another thing, I, another big part of my platform in terms of supporting uh, faculty associations and campus associations is supporting them in their advocacy efforts. However, AUFSJ is strong. It is a, one of the strongest. Uh, out of the campus associations and faculty associations in terms of advocacy efforts. What I would like to do is work with AUMSJ, do some consultation, look into what they do that makes them so good, and use them as a model for the others. My name is, thank you. My name is Catherine Ortzak, running for Vice President Academic. Voting is on March 5th and 6th next week, and uh, thank you for your time. Merci Catherine, les femmes sont en force, ça on peut le dire. Et la dernière candidate s'appelle Stéphanie. Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie, I'm running for BP Academic. It's nice to see all the faces that I met on Monday out coming to hear all the rest of the candidates. Um, as most of you have noticed on my handles, I'm running on a four point platform, including ensuring that teaching quality and the undergraduate experience is valued, decreasing the cost of learning materials, increasing support for campus and faculty associations, as well as implementing online advisement. Uh, all that is available on my website at www.voteforstaff.com. What I want to talk about is what made me want to run. What made me want to put my name as, in as the very first Augustana student running in an SU election. I would sit and watch for two years while SU candidates came out to my campus, pretended to be interested in my issues for two weeks, get elected and then promptly forget we existed. Uh, what I want to do and what I think, especially in a portfolio that deals with your academics, your degree, you need someone on the executive that is constantly aware that things that work at North Campus do not work at Campus St. John and Augustana. I have been there, I've been on a students association where the SU has passed a bylaw that will not work for us. I've been there trying to implement with the administration a bylaw that the administration at North Campus passed that will not work at Augustana. And there needs to be someone on the executive that is constantly aware of yes, we just spent four months finding a solution that works for North Campus. Now can we spend the same amount of time working on something that will actually work for Campus St. John and Augustana? Um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. There's more candidates and questions. I can't wait to hear your questions. And once again, on March 5th and 6th, both Stephanie for BP Academic. Thank you, guys. nous exposer sa plateforme et maintenant c'est vous qu'on va entendre. Donc on va passer avec les questions. Si quelqu'un d'entre vous a une question, vous êtes bienvenu à les poser. Aucune question Hey. So I have a question for the BPSL race. As a student who is tremendously proud and tremendously passionate uh, to be a Francophone student, and don't want to see my academics being assimilated into the entire university. How do you plan on 
integrating Campus St. John's into SU, into SU events at main campus. We hear it all the time that yes, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. I'm really sick of that. I want a concrete plan. I wanna know exactly what you're gonna do for me so that I can be a part of the U of A and still be a proud faculty. Yeah. Hello, and that's an excellent question. And I'm going to say, first, you should get to do what you think is good. I think one of the problems in the past has been that people come and they say, this is what I like doing, and this is what everyone should like doing, and this is what we will all do. And then it doesn't work. Because just for me, I like playing the violin, I like doing weights, I like singing in a choir, uh, I like speaking Spanish, I like hanging out with people, I like getting tanked, I like dancing, I like so many things. And they're different than what other people like. Why should you guys do what I want to do? What I want to do as VPSL is introduce the mechanisms so that no matter what it is that you want to do, whether you want to do it in English or French or Swahili, you can find in the 40,000 people in the university at least another 200 people that want to do the same thing. To set you up with the volunteers that you need to make things happen, to make sure that what you want to happen will happen as you see it. To implement your vision, not necessarily mine. I am all about you. I heard a really good thing. Take control, make followers. Give control, make leaders. I believe this university, this world needs leaders. And I think that you guys, that we're all responsible adults, we can make our plans, we can make our events, we can make wonderful things. I believe in all of us. And what I will do is give you what you need to do what you want and get the hell out of the way. Fabian González, uh, Vice President of uh, Student Union and Student Life. Thank you. Salut. Um, donc pour moi, c'est une chose de, de reconnecter les... <rire> ah, donc, je pense que c'est vraiment d'impliquer les, les asso associations facultés de Main Campus ici au campus Saint-Jean. Donc, d'avoir une, une partie de qui vient ici, qui démontre ce qu'ils font là-bas. Ah, ah, ce qu'ils font là-bas et d'apporter ces événements ici pour que on ait l'opportunité de participer si on veut. Ah, merci. Um, et aussi, on a besoin de, de communiquer avec ces présidents qui vont avoir ces, ces ingénieurs, ces, ces infirmières, ces, ces étudiants de la science politique, um, des, des scientifiques, um, pour apporter des éléments de networking, des, des éléments qui leur aident à progresser académiquement, socialement et à, au sein de l'université pour s'impliquer dans sa communauté. Merci. Now, you were making me think a lot about uh, the four points of my platform that I talked about making single events or referring events that would connect the, the satellite campus to the North Campus and vice versa. But those are single events. They connect us once, and then the next PPSL will have to promise again, I'll throw that single event, I'll throw that single event. What we're talking about right now is an institutional issue. So in terms of representation on North Campus, it's been talked about already. We have Students Council, and Students Council stays on North Campus. They don't get out. Right now, Students Council is representation by faculty association. I think it'd be really nice to see an AUSF, AUSFJ representative on that Students Council. Invite them out. We can bring Students Council over here. I thought Bashir had a wonderful point there. Uh, earlier, Patrick mentioned the, uh, the health wave event being put on the health, by the Health Students Science Association. Now, the Health Student Science Association was able to make that event so big because they brought it up at the Council of, Fac uh, Council of Faculty Association. Uh, if we can get AUSFJ involved with the Council of Faculty Association, you too will be a part of that discussion, and we can make that an institutional. And so every year, AUSFJ is connected with the other faculty, the faculty associations, so we can have you, the students, in that conversation, in that room, year after year, making those decisions and like, collaborating on those events. I, I hope you like that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so, like I mentioned before, we're, we're all part of one university, and I, I really want to bring Augustana, CSJ, North Campus, I really like calling it North Campus as a 
Donc c'était les seuls présidents qui pouvaient répondre à la question. On va passer à, notre, à une autre question s'il y en a. 
You mind just telling me? I was just wondering if the pop quiz question is there anyone here that can tell me, other than Patrick, what AWFSG stands for? Yes? Go. Can I say? Association de Universitaire Faculty Saint Jean. for that to be wrapped up by the end of this year, uh, because that is uh, William Lau's project, so hopefully he'll make good on his promise and finish that up. But if not, that is something I'll definitely continue and uh, work to make accountable to its students and representative of the students it's supposed to represent, as well as a, an organization that the SU can use to tap into that underrepresented dem er, demographic that we have here at the U of A. Um, okay, uh, that was a great question. I am an international student. I have lived in India for 20, I'm 21 years old, so 20 years now. Uh, I came here for university. Uh, and yes, you know, international students are underrepresented. I have lived in Lister and I've seen international students the way they're represented, the way they interact, uh, programming for them. And I love the idea of the International Students Association. It's a great idea for an umbrella association for um, advocating for the rights of international students. And um, I'm, I really want to see representation on that association from the different campuses. Um, I want the ISA, the, the proposed ISA, to work with the International Center, which is currently on um, North Campus, and um, develop programs for to support international students. And I am paying those increased fees so damn right I'm going to fight for um, the promises that the university has made and make sure that they're held accountable for that. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Hello. So I participated in the Not On Our Backs movement. I am very proud of what we did. We had at some point 400 people standing outside council chambers. President Kuzmu shed tears when Indira was not very nice at the chance she had to be nice. Now, I believe that they say you can know people by how they treat the people they don't have to be nice to. And the university didn't have to be nice to international students and they didn't. But we got 400 people, we got more than that people, and I found that the main problem was that a lot of the people that didn't join in that movement, they thought international students is not us. We are us, they are someone else. I think that we need to integrate the international student society, we need to pull them Tell them that they can vote, that they're important. Tell them that they are students just like any other one of us. They need to be seen not as international students, but as my good friend uh, Juan from Korea, my good friend PJ from India, my good friend uh, Kenshi from Japan. Me, myself, I am your good friend Fabian from Mexico. We are all in this, we're all one people, we're all the same. And I very strongly believe that the next time that someone tries to step on international students, we should all stand up for it together. We are all in the same boat. We are one university. I, I believe very strongly in this. Uh, my name is Fabian Gonzalez. Uh, I'm running for VPSO. I'm gonna drop the mic, wrap that over. <laughs> so yeah, this actually hits very close to home for me as well because when I was getting ready for this election, I had a very hard choice to make because I do work with nonprofits in the province and I, was very strongly considering the VP external position. So for the past four months, I've been doing research on the international student 
structure. Uh, the International Students Association is actually going to be finishing up their constitution, hopefully by May or June. And uh, the goal with that is to hold up their voice as a unique voice alongside the Students' Union, rather than the Students' Union speaking for them, because your unique voice as international students is super important to get out there. Now, in my research of the VP external position, there are we had to come up with a very discreet plan. They are going to try and raise it again. The, uh, the tuition is unregulated, so we need to provide a contingency plan to support them when the tuition does get raised, connect them with the food bank, connect them with the services. We uh, should look for a grandfather clause so that when they do raise tuition, that tuition is only raised for new people coming in and that we have, we have some predictability for our international students that are here now. And the last step, of course, is regulation. And as VP uh, Student Life, I'd like to work with the VP External. Uh, the VP External does the advocacy, but the VP Student Life is the one that gathers your voice together into data. You can get that data sets, get those testimonials. That way the VP External has a very strong bargain point. They have the data, they have the student experience, so they can validate our political stance to push for regulation. Thank you. Je ne sais pas si vous avez été convaincu par leur discours, mais s'il y a encore des questions, vous pouvez leur poser. I just have, it's not really a question, it's more just a criticism. For everybody who's on their phones, are they more important than our issues, or are you just better than us? Because I'm sorry, if you're standing at your phone, you're not listening to the future council, why in, why would I vote for you? It's beyond me. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Tout est calme, tout est bien, tout est beau. On va prendre une autre question dans le public. S'il y en a, bien sûr. Pas de question Une autre. Ok, donc pour ceux d'entre vous qui ne savent pas, chaque faculty association et campus association est sur un board ensemble, c'est appelé les associations de council, qui sont dans le portfolio de l'UPI académique. And as you guys know, Justin Challen as VP Academic has been absolutely fantastic. Um, and I personally, having been on these on these uh, on these boards for two years now uh, as president and VP internal, I've seen it work really well and I've seen it work really badly um, for all of the boards. And it's it's a, the Council of Faculty Associations is a council that has a lot of potential that is often not met. And when you have all of these faculty associations coming together, you have all these leaders from all over campus with different ideas and different perspectives coming together, that's a lot of potential. And when you're not reaching into that, it hurts. And it doesn't help us to be as with meetings, it's a waste of our time. And it doesn't help you guys either as SU execs. So I'm wondering from the VP Academics, what's your plan for COPA? Um, how much you know about COPA? Because obviously we have Catherine who's been there the entire time. So tell me, convince me, essentially. Convince me that you are the one who's going to be the best for COPA. Ça, c'est une question explosive. Donc, je pense que Curry Hudson voudrait bien répondre à la question. Non, non, non. 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 Non, non, The Council of Faculty Associations has four working groups. The COPA Senior Board, which, has, which uh, 
as the president presidents of the 14 faculty associations and campus associations, the Fac finance and administration working group, which has the VP finances, the member services working group, which is now chaired by Student Life, actually, which has the VP services and VP events, uh, and then also the uh, advocacy working group, which has the VP academics and VP internals of the, of the faculty associations and the campus associations. These groups are, oh, 30 seconds, okay. What I would rather use COPA not to disseminate information, but to start conversation between the faculty associations. Each of them has something that they do better than the others, and I would like to share the experiences and the, uh, the strategies that they use in COPA rather than just use it to disseminate information. Thank you. Sorry, everybody, the rap battle's over. Hi, thank you for the question. Um, I also have a little bit of an advantage on this question because unlike other faculty associations, at the ASA, the VP Academic sits on most of the board rather than dividing it up. Um, uh, if you read my platform, one of the things I really want to do is enhance Discover Governance's role. Uh, right now, I find that COPA is used a lot. It's an hour of time spent with the VP Academic giving us information and us sometimes getting to a point where we can discuss things and then it's over and we all go our separate ways. Uh, what I think I would like to do is enhance the government and discover governance's role in this so that through COPA, if you have the advocacy group, uh, more training is put on throughout the year for the advocacy. If you have the finance and administration working group, you have a training day where you teach finance and administration at the end of the year how to do their financial reports. Um, and discover governance through COPA offers more training to the executives uh, I think that's one way we can strengthen the Council of Faculty Associations. Thank you for your time, and I'm Stephanie. Again, my name is Sahib Rahman, and I'm currently serving as the Vice President of Academic of the Environmental Sciences Society. So in that role, I sit on the uh, COPA Advocacy Working Group, and also on the Senior Board Board at times. One thing that I'd like to see with COPA is a lot of times we get a lot of great information from us in time. At the same time, it gets updated very quickly because of how fast university governance and advocacy works. So I'd like to see the base camp project that was started this year with uh, COPA be advanced. I'd really like to make sure that faculty associations work with Discover Governance to make sure that they have continuous conversations, not just one twice a year. Perhaps that'll mean more meetings with uh, faculty associations. And in fact, one thing that I'd like to do as soon as I like it, I'd like to work with outgoing members and incoming members to build a vision for their faculty, for what they'd like to see in their students. Thanks for your time. Keep up the great questions. Okay, not going to lie, I don't know much about COPA, so I don't have the experience to answer this question. I'm sorry. I don't want to share about it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I'm not running for academic, but one of the things I'd like to do is try to be a bit cross-platform, and I was uh, considering running for academic for a little while. So one of the ideas I had was to uh, kind of increase the ability for COVID to lobby directly against council. So when there are things that they don't like, say, for example, or things that aren't working well, the uh, review process for, for uh, uh, an association's finances to so lobby directly against council. So council can hear their uh, the faculty associations and, and campus associations uh, desires as opposed to it's just coming from the VPA. Okay, two part question for the VP external race. Uh, do you want to go here for a First part, first part is anybody can have a platform. What kind of experience do you bring to the table? Which leads to second part. <laughs> Everybody's been talking about uh, uniting the student voice, getting students together, going down to people's offices, manifesting. In my opinion, policy has been put in place. It's really hard to overturn policy. What are you going to do now that policy is in place? Budget cuts are reality. What can you do to recover from that? Budget cuts have happened. What can we do moving forward? I know about budget cuts. 
Moving forward. <laughs> Repeating myself. <laughs> I think it's really, really important that the BP External has experience not only with grassroots stuff, so bringing students' voices and taking them up, but also, you know, being in meetings and chairing meetings and knowing what lobbying and policy is all about. Uh, right now, I'm working as a researcher for CAUSE, which is the provincial lobby group, uh, Council of Alberta University students. So I have a ton of experience, you know, I understand the issues really well. Um, I know how to make policy. I actually started a student group called the Student Network for Advocacy and Public Policy, and we teach students how to write policy briefs and how to go to lobby meetings. So that's a really brief part about my experience. <clears throat> Second point was, um, what are we going to do about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, yes, it's, we need to do more than communicating cuts. Obviously, everybody knows what's happening with the budget. So I think that it's important we protect students from the aftermath. And that means you know, regulating the MDIS. That means making sure students have job opportunities so that they can deal with increasing debt levels. That means making sure that you know students can participate more in their democracy. Um, and again, it means regulating international student differential fees. Because like we said before, it's not regulated in the PSLA, so we have to start protecting students from the aftermath of the cuts. Obviously, we can't necessarily prevent them, but let's help students deal with it. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the question, and first of all, I want to apologize to you and everyone here because I was sitting in the corner playing on my phone, and it's weird because as candidates, you sit there and you think Twitter and Facebook likes are the most important thing, and it's not. And, I want, and I'm sorry to all of you for doing that. Won't happen again. Um, but besides that, so experience, I actually had an awesome opportunity this summer. Uh, I interned with the Deputy Premier and the Minister of Advanced Education in the legislature. So uh, it was really awesome. I got to go to the legislature every day. I worked in his office. There's a, an office of seven or eight people. And uh, I really got to learn about the decision-making process, about how relationships make differences when you're sitting at the table, um, about, and creating policy that affects students. Um, as and on that same vein, as like communicating budget cuts, the way I approach advocacy personally is more of a bang on the table and bang on the door. So I'd rather sit at the table and talk to someone than bang on the door protesting because they can shut you up that way and they don't have to listen to you. When you're sitting right in front of someone, you're talking to them one on one. You're looking them in the eye. That's when they understand certain issues. Uh, and yeah, that's my approach. So I'm Thomas Davis. So I'm going to go briefly over my uh, my credentials here. I guess it's, I'm going to admit it's very targeted. It's very specific. I do do a bit of um, I do work with a political party. Um, I do sit on an executive board for a youth caucus, um, which I am prepared to resign effective if I do win the uh, effective the term if I do win. Um, so that's the thing. I do sit on the, term, uh, on the board. I've helped out with MLA's writing policy for the party. I've helped out and written policy has gone into this into their constitution for the party. So all the work I've done is very political in nature. So I think that's um, an advantage for the internal position. So going on to what I would do specifically, yeah, I talk about banging my doors as Dylan was saying and whatnot, and people won't really give me the time of day. Yeah, sure. But I also think that we really need to take a two-tier approach to this. We need to say, well, yeah, now that we know what's happened, we have to say, well, as Ami was saying, we need to uh, restrict and regulate what's going on, so on the PSLA and whatnot, and then we have to go and fight back. We have to say, well, you took our budget money away before, that was wrong, now you're not allowed to take any more money away from us, but when are you going to start taking us money back? So I'm going to sit down and say, Minister, we need the money back because of all of these reasons. Look at what the students have said, this is what the students are saying, we need this money back. And then I've worked with other MLAs as well as the lobby and put pressure on between many different parties, put pressure on specific people who are in positions to make decisions regarding budget, distribution, and whatnot. So once again, I'm Thomas Day. Yeah, thanks. Did we hear from Board of Governors, too, on the same question? Uh, it's, a, it's a two-pronged strategy. One thing is that you have to focus not only on <laughs> but the other issue is also an internal strategy. 
you know, we're just talking about students. Students want this. Students want that. Where's students? You talk to MLA, like English University. Like, oh, they're going to be gone in four years. Right? So you have to talk to them on their level and they're what, how they want to get it. Part of that is creating internal. You know, it's one thing about government structure, but how is the university managing their budget? From non dedicated funding, I, I keep hammering that because it, it's super important because that's where tuition money goes for us and that's where provincial money goes for us. We become self sufficient in that. And this is going to take 15, 20 years. And then looking at other avenues, like you can look at it on my website, super saying, no, it's here. Subsidies, increasing alumni donations private or property or look at other sources of revenue, then we become less dependent on government funding and, 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 and the various fluctuations in that. Second of all is becoming more transparent. If we're advocating for government, that hey listen, that you know students want this, students want that, or the university, they're not going to listen to need leverage, we need bargaining leverage. That's why we increase transparency through the sunshine list what you're advocating. Any professor over two hundred thousand dollars, any university staff over two hundred thousand dollars, they will be on this list. You, Ontario already has this, the University of DC has most people don't know that our administration makes the highest in the country, and our university staff make the highest in the country. That way we negotiate and we go, here, look at Western Canada, look at how, many, how much university staff is making in Ontario. Look how much many staff are making it in D.C. And look how many, how much more it is that you okay. Maybe it's not students or the provincial government cuts, maybe it's the fact that you guys have a spending problem. And that's how we gain leverage and that's how we gain bargaining power to achieve what we want. Uh, that's, and that's what I can do with the Board of Governors. <laughs> I'd like to apologize for the whole issue of the phone. Some tragedy has happened and I guess we need to be dealing with. Uh, my credentials, I'll quickly go over them. I, I have worked with political parties before, provincially and federally. I won't mention which ones, but it's been minimal work. Uh, most of the work I have done has been with uh, national and international uh, nonprofit organizations, organizing international conferences, educating to educate students about. Uh, about uh, about environmental issues and such, as well as as well as de de developmental, and wanting at the hospital, as well as starting my own business, which is which is a perspective I would bring to to, to dealing with these financial budget issues. Of course, like my uh, Mr. Hanscher has gone over this as well, looking at looking at what what the tuition goes towards, uh, what what the tuition goes towards, and what we're spending it on. Uh, things such as things such as uh, new buildings, such as Lisa College. And other things that do not, are not needed at this point. So we can cut those. We can cut administrative, administrative costs, such as our highly paid staff. They're not necessary. And as we see, and presidents have, uh, have also uh, said before that many times they don't even show up to meetings. Many times they're not there. So if they're not there, if they're not providing their services, why do we need them? We can go without them. But let's deal with that. Let's let's cut the cost and let's go with the students. If the students are 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 the life of the university. So we can't always be like, okay, budget cuts. Oh, let's look, we have international students, they're paying twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year. Let's just make them pay more. They're not cash cows, they're people and we will reach a tipping point at every point which one will be like, we have better options. We will go there. Because right now student Canadian students have the opportunity to go abroad and study at subsidized rates. And why and, and at the same time Canada has, does not. Canada has one of the highest international rates in the world. Why do we do this? We don't know. Let's let's change that. Let's have transparency. Let's have let's have let's have regula regularity. Re let's have regulations on these fees and these issues. And it's going to be a long-term plan. And I'm still taking your time because you're getting proud of me. Thank you. My name is Omar Faru. Merci Omar Faru. Donc on va clôturer ce forum. Si vous n'êtes toujours pas convaincu, il y aura un forum le lundi à Mayer à 12h, j'espère que vous pourrez tous venir et surtout n'oubliez pas de voter MASH 15 and 6. Thank you.